On this week's KSP News Show, Squad reveals a procedurally generated heat shield will be coming in 1.1. And, with 1.1 still a while away, what would you add if you had control over development? All that and more on this week's Christmas edition of the KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jin Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening, afternoon, my fellow Kerbonauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to this week's KSP News Show. We're going to kick this KSP News Show off with a clip from I'm Pacific. Let's check it out. And there we go, it was pretty sweet, I love the crash at the end. Do remember to go check out I'm Pacific, the link to his channel will be in the description down below. But yeah, without further ado, let's get on with the awesome KSP news that we have for this week, the last one before Christmas. So yes, in last week's dev notes, Squad of course did state that they are gearing up to put 1.1 into QA testing. They say it's still quite a while away yet, so not to uh, get too excited at that. But as a result of all these preparations, it is meaning that their Christmas schedule is quite busy. This means that in this week's dev notes anyway, there hasn't been all that much of an update with regards to how the game is doing. It's more just sort of the back-end work and trying to compile everything together. There hasn't actually been all that much sort of uh, visual progress for us, although I'm sure there is a lot of progress um, through squad size because obviously they've been making the damn thing and trying to get KSP to run, which to us it doesn't look like much, but to squad it's a massive undertaking to actually get the Unity 5 engine and, and stuff working with, uh, with Kerbal Space Program in the right way. In fact, squad's deadline for QA has been so tight and they've been getting so much stuff stuff done in the meantime, they started referring to QA testing as QA Mageddon or Armageddon, I'm not sure how they pronounce that, but I thought that was kind of funny to be fair. They did manage to share one little tidbit of information with us though, it says in the dev last week's dev notes, more progress came from Bob, aka Roverdude, working on the probe, te probe telemetry interface, setting up the map view's visual display where a player can get a clear view of commu their communications network. On, so on top of that, he's finalizing the relay, direct antenna ranges, and park configs, launching lots of test rockets in the process. He also found time to finish off an extra little goodie for 1.1. One, and it posts an Imga link to this uh, photograph of a part, new part, which I will put on the screen right about now. And it appears to be some form of procedurally generated heat shield. Now, personally, I think this thing looks pretty cool. And to be honest, I think we've been crying out for something like this in KSP for a long time since the uh, re-entry heating was introduced in 1.0. Um, I just like the whole sort of fact that we can now have a bit more flexibility with regards to like our craft size and stuff like that. In the past, it's kind of been a bit awkward with having just the sets, three sizes of heat shield. Um, when you've actually been trying to make a craft that uh, that is perhaps larger than that size, maybe. As a result, you probably end up having to use multiple heat shields and it would either look ugly or it probably wouldn't work at all and you'd end up some bit parts of your ship ending up just exploding. It really made landing on places with thicker atmospheres, such as maybe Jewel, although I know you can't really land on Jewel, more like probing the atmosphere of Jewel and landing on EVE, tasks such as those a lot harder than they perhaps should actually be. With this new shield, it should make things a lot easier landing heavier stuff on the surfaces of, like I say, EVE, as well as doing sort of Galileo style missions to Jewel where we just drop a spacecraft in, into the atmosphere at sort of many meters per second and uh, just watch as the heat shield blader just burns away and we try and get uh, atmospheric data. But I digress, the main, main point I'm trying to make here is this heat shield definitely has a lot of practical applications and I honestly can't wait to actually try and use it. Hopefully it is in all the sizes, so like the, the base part of it, sort of, you know how the fairings have the 1.25, 2.5 and 3.5 meter sort of bases, the procedural fairings, and then you just sort of build from that. Hopefully they are the same for the heat shields, they're basically just like an inverted fairing. 
I hope that's correct, otherwise it is going to make building slightly harder, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see for that. So let me know what you think of these in the comments down below. Personally, I think these are going to be very, very versatile, and I can't wait to start using them, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, I'm really, really interested to hear them. Okay, so this next story really isn't a story all that much, so to speak. It's more sort of a discussion point. As I said, this week there hasn't all be that been all that much KSP news aside from this of whole heat shield thing and the fact they're gearing, gearing up for uh, QA testing in some points in the near future. So today I wanted to sort of have sort of a minor discussion with you guys, as I do with every update, to ask what would you like to see in this next update 1.1. Now as I say almost every update, I think my main addition if I were to add anything into Kerbal Space Program would probably be um, damageable or destructible terrain or at least semi-destructible so that if you crashed a craft maybe into, uh, into the surface it would sort of leave a crater maybe three or four meters deep, something along those lines. And I just think that would be pretty awesome because it would literally add a layer of uh, layer of, of realism into KSP, which I think is honestly lacking. And I also think that it would be uh, it would add something to do on the surface of bodies as well, because this wouldn't just have the effect of looking very funny when you actually craft crash your craft. It could in fact be used for practical purposes. As I've stated before, it could give the kerbals um, that you have on the surface of a planet something to do on EVA, meaning they could excavate a crater, sort of. I don't know, the size that you want, and it means you could land a base module in there, and so as a result you could sort of have like radiation protection, or just have a more efficient sort of storage for your base, meaning that it can be more compact in size, but also have a larger volume inside, uh, because you'll have a layer, almost like a basement, down below the surface. Something like that probably would take a long time to add though, so I don't think it's probably, well, it's almost certain it's not going to be able to be fitted into uh, into 1.1, but to, honestly, with the stuff that's coming in 1.1, I'm honestly not um, not worried about that whatsoever. I mean, this is just a, this is literally just a suggestion. It would probably have to be an update in itself, even if it did come out, but that's just one of the main things that I would probably like to see in uh, Kerbal Space Program in the future at some point. On top of that, I would also like to see a bit more beautification. Obviously, the Unity 5 port is going to optimize everything beautifully for Kerbal Space Program, which means we we'll should see a notable increase in frame rate um, across most graphics cards and stuff like that. Um, so that would give Squad a little bit more leeway to sort of like sort of dull the game up a little bit and sort of make it look a little bit prettier than it does at the moment because while the stock game doesn't actually look too bad I do think it does look rather ugly in some cases, especially when you're just in low curb in orbit and you've literally, there's no sunrise or sunset coming, it's just like the ocean and then the uh, the, the terrain underneath just sort of uh, clipping through the water and stuff like that. It does look kind of odd at some times. So I do think that uh, the beautification could be something that they could perhaps touch on maybe um, in, uh, in either 1.1 or a future update. But I want to know what you guys think. This is a discussion video, obviously. Do you think I'm completely wrong? Do you agree? with what I say. What are your opinions if you could add anything into 1.1? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Like I say, I do read all the comments. I do like them when I have read them. But that's going to pretty much round it off for this week's KSP News Show, guys. It has been a shorter one than usual, and I know you guys have been crying out for a uh, a shorter episode. This will probably be the last KSP News Show of uh, before Christmas, and maybe before the new year, depending on if any uh, massive developments come out in the time between uh, now and, obviously, new year, to start of 2016. I've got a dash off to a Christmas party now, guys. We're celebrating uh, breaking up for college for the, Chris for the uh, Christmas holidays. But aside from that, guys, that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode, so it basically remains for me to say, remember to like and subscribe for more. My name is Jindy Kerman and as always, stay classy.